Mother, it's morning. Time to get up. Father, I need to talk to you. Something very important has happened. Good morning, Nephi. You sound anxious about something. What is it? Father, I arose very early this morning and went out to pray. Nephi had been praying to his Heavenly Father early that morning, and he told Nephi that they would soon be in a new land, a beautiful land. And if Nephi would always obey his father, he would be a ruler over his brothers, and Laman would not. Yes, Nephi, I believe you. Would you like to hear about a special dream I had last night? Yes, I would. What was it about? Come, let's have breakfast, and I'll tell you and your brothers. That was a good breakfast, my dear wife. A layman, just a moment. Before you leave, we need to talk about something. Oh, no. Another lecture? I don't want to stay. Why don't you let me go do something else while the rest of you talk? The Lord showed me a dream last night. A dream? You're always having dreams. I'd rather not hear it. Now sit down, layman, and pay attention. I want you to hear this. Heavenly Father wanted my brothers to go back to Jerusalem for a short trip to get a book which was made of shiny metal called brass. The brass book was kept by a wicked man named Laban. It was a very important book, and Heavenly Father wanted my father to have it. I'm not going back to Jerusalem for some book. What kind of a book? It is a book made of brass pages. What is written on the plates of brass, Father? They must be important. They are important, Nephi. They tell about Heavenly Father and what He wants us to do. They also have our genealogy and history on them. I'll go back to Jerusalem to get the brass plates. I'm not afraid. I know that Heavenly Father wouldn't ask us to do something if it couldn't be done. Let's go, Sam. Thank you, Nephi. Now, if your older brothers will go with you to help, but maybe they are afraid. Who's afraid? I'm not afraid of anything. Let's go. So my four brothers went all the way back to Jerusalem. It was a long trip, and it took many days. I'm tired and hot. Whose idea was this to go back to Jerusalem? It was the Lord's idea, so let's quit complaining. There it is. Huh. I almost forgot what it looked like. Hey, how come it's still here? I thought it was supposed to be destroyed. It will be, but not right away. It takes time, and Heavenly Father is giving them another chance to repent. Let's go to Laban's house and get the plates. Each of them was afraid to get the plates, because the man who kept them was a very strong man, and also very wicked, and it would not be easy to get them. They chose straws. Whoever got the shortest straw had to go ask Laban for the brass plates. Laman got the short straw. So away he went towards Laban's house to ask him for the plates, while my other brothers watched and waited. I'm not afraid. I'll be back with the plates in one hour. You wait here and see. Help! Help! Run for your lives! They're coming to kill us! Run! Run! Laban did not let Laman have the plates. He called Laman a robber and sent his guards to kill him. Laban said he'd kill me if I ever came back and that he would never let, let me have the plates. He said that they were too valuable to give to anyone. But if we don't get the brass plates, they'll be destroyed when the Lord destroys the city. Yes, you're right, Sam. There must be a way to get them. We cannot go back to our parents without the plates. I have the answer. Our gold and silver. Remember, we left it in our home when we departed into the wilderness. We'll get our gold and silver and trade it for the plates of brass. Yeah, good idea. Why didn't we think of that earlier? 
Well, the least he could do is kill us. So Laman, Lemuel, Sam, and Nephi traveled a short way to their home and gathered up their treasures, which they had left behind earlier, and they brought them to Laban's house. Who's there? Guards? See who's at the door. They are young men, sir. They have gold and silver and wish to see you about something. Money? You say they have money? Well, let them come in. Laban was a wicked man who loved money too much. He asked Nephi what they wanted to trade for their gold. Nephi told him they wanted the brass plates for their father, who was a prophet. You want the brass plates? So, you are the ones. Guards! Take the money and kill them. Laban stole their treasures and told his guards to kill them, so no one would find out. My brothers ran into the wilderness and hid in a cave. Laman became very upset, and so did Lemuel. Nephi, you almost got us killed. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood in front of Laman and Lemuel and gave them a warning never to be cruel to Nephi and Sam again. The angel told them that Nephi was to be the ruler over them because Laman and Lemuel always disobeyed the Lord. And the angel also told them to go back to Jerusalem and this time they would get the plates. I still don't see how we're going to get those plates. We'll be killed if we go into the city again. Don't you worry. I'll go alone. You wait here. The Lord will show me how to get the plates. Nephi, aren't you afraid? Yes, but the Lord is on our side, so we can't lose. Wait here for me. I'll be back as soon as I can. So Nephi carefully and quietly entered the city. He did not know which way to go, but he let the Lord guide his footsteps and soon found himself walking toward Laban's house. One for thee and two for me. That's the beauty. In the dark came a man down the street who was drinking wine. He stumbled and fell close by Nephi. It was Laban, the wicked man who tried to kill them, and the man who wouldn't let them have the plates. He was drunk and had fallen unconscious to the ground. Nephi was frightened. He took Laban's sword and looked at it. It was the same sword that might have killed Nephi if he had not run away. Then the Spirit of the Lord told Nephi that he should take Laban's sword and kill him. But Nephi had never killed anyone and was afraid to kill Laban. I can't kill Laban. But he did try to kill us. And he's, and he's a very wicked man. And he won't let our father have the brass plates. And if we don't get the brass plates, we won't be able to keep the Lord's commandments. The spirit told Nephi that it is better for one wicked man to die so that righteous people can learn about the Lord. So Nephi took Laban's life and then put on Laban's clothing and went into his house to get the brass plates. Because Nephi was dressed up like Laban and it was dark, Laban's servant thought Nephi was Laban, so he gave Nephi the brass plates and helped him carry them out of the city. You sound a little different tonight, sir. Are you ill? <clears throat> e yes, it must be something like that. Let's go. Come along. I have the plates! I have the plates! Because it was still dark, my brothers thought it was Laban who had come to kill them, so they ran. Laban? Lemuel! Sam, stop! It's me, your brother Nephi! Stop running! Well, they finally believed it was Nephi, and they stopped, 
But do you know what? Laban's servant, whose name was Zoram, got scared and started running away. But Nephi stopped him and told him that the Lord commanded them to get the brass plates and bring them to their father in the wilderness. Zoram believed Nephi and went with them back into the wilderness because he was a good man. Lehi, I'm sure our sons will never return. They have probably been killed. Oh, why did you send them back to Jerusalem? Why? Soraya, don't you worry, my dear. They'll be back soon. It was the Lord's commandment, you know, and the Lord doesn't make mistakes. We'll just have to be patient. Oh, Levi, look. It's them. It's our sons. Oh, they're safe. They're safe. Thank the Lord. Mother, father, we're back. We have the plates. Yeah, thanks to me. Layman, Lemuel, Sam, Nephi. Oh, come let me see you. Oh, I thought I'd never see you again. Well, mother and father were very thankful and so happy their sons returned safe and sound. You can see how happy everyone was. Mother, father, this is Zoram, Laban's servant. He is a good man, and he wants to be with us in the wilderness. You are most welcome, Zoram. Yes, we are happy to have you with us. I'll fix a place for you at the table. Come. You must be hungry. You should have been there, Mother. I did it all myself. No, you didn't. Nephi got the plates, not you. Well, I set things up. How did you do it, Nephi? Tell me about it. It's, it's a long story, Father. And a frightening one. Nephi told his father all that had happened and how they almost lost their lives. Layman came running back as fast as he could, shouting, run for your lives, run for your lives. He was scared to death. I wasn't scared. I was just watching out for my brothers. I didn't want any of you getting hurt. Oh, sure. You cared about us a lot. Like the time you and Lemuel were whipping Nephi and me, and an angel of the Lord had to come and stop you. You were fighting? An angel came? Father was upset with Laman and Lemuel. Nephi told father and mother all that happened and how hard it was to kill Laban. But my father reminded Nephi that it is better that one wicked man should die than for many people to never know the Lord. Father comforted Nephi and told him how proud he was that Nephi obeyed the Lord. You see, son, if the Lord did the hard things for us, then we would never become like him. He wants us to be strong and obedient, and that's how you become like the Lord. And, son, someday many people will thank you for doing what had to be done. You are not only a man, but you are a man of God. My family knelt in prayer and thanked the Lord that they were all together again. Father was most happy of all. Next time, we'll learn that the Lord talks to parents in dreams. I saw in my dream a beautiful tree, the most beautiful I have ever seen. And by the tree was a long rod of iron. We'll see you then. Bye now.